Hello class, we're looking at the payroll program found in Chapter 3 of the Visual Basic Text. I've gone ahead and pasted it into a new project. Uh, the text was actually found in the Week 5 Materials Examples subfolder. And I did go ahead and change the module name from Payroll Report to Module 1. Um, module 1 is the default value, and if you want to get rolling quickly, that's the easiest way to do it. You can also change your project properties. That information is found under Start Here How To in Blackboard. But for simplicity, I went ahead and just changed that to the default Module 1 so I could get my program to run. Let's see what this program does. So we run the program. It asks for the employee's name, which I'm going to go ahead and populate with a value here. And then it goes on to ask the user for more information. It asks for the gross pay. So I'll go ahead and provide a value here as well. Okay. From there, we can see it did some calculations. It calculated, first it outputs George and my gross pay that I input as the user, but then it calculates deductions and net pay. And notice it goes on to ask for the next employee's name. So this pattern is continuing. We do have a loop in this program that keeps running until the user types XXXX for the employee's name. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm on my third employee, and I'm going to type all capital X's, and notice that the program ends. So that's the way the program works. Let's take a closer look at it. Typically, at the top of most programs, we have a block of variable declarations. Remember, these are placeholders for values that we're going to be using in our programs, and we give those placeholders names, such as this top one. We create a variable. In this case, it's actually called name. And the intention is to use this variable of type string to store the employee name that we get from the user. So we have some others here. We have gross, deduct, and net. We have a comma delimited list. We are allowed to write it in this way if we have multiples of type double. And those are all type double because we're going to be working with money. We'll see how gross string is used a little bit later on. And these constants here are used in the program. Um, constants are just like variables, except that their values do not change, such as this one here, rate, that we're going to use to calculate the deduction, and this one, quit, that we're going to use to compare to the user's input to see if they have typed XXX. The real meat of the program begins after the variable and constant declarations, where we ask for the first employee's name. So this line here outputs a header that um, just basically says payroll report. And then we ask for the first employee's name. Using input box, the user will type a value, which is then assigned to variable name. We do this before the, the loop begins, which actually happens in the line, the statement just below where we're at. Um, in the event that the user would type XXX as the first employee's name, we do not want to go on and ask for their pay. So we organize it in this fashion so that we get the name before we begin the loop so that we have a valid value to compare. This is called priming the loop. So while the name is not equal to XXX, then we'll go in, into the body of the loop and ask for the gross pay. These two lines that I've just highlighted will prompt the user for the gross pay, assign it to a variable called gross string, and then turn around and take a copy of gross string, convert it to a double, and finally assign it to the variable gross, which is a variable of type double. Typically, when we read in numeric values from the user, we do do it in this fashion because input box actually returns a string. So we read it in as a string, and then we convert it to a number, and finally assign it to our numeric variable. The next step is we calculate the deduction and we calculate the net pay. So at the end of these two statements, deduction and net do have a value. And the final statements inside of the loop print the name, gross pay, deductions, and net for the user. And then the very last step is to ask for the next employee's name. This is very important so we don't end up in an infinite loop because we're going to loop back up here now and test that next name against XXX. If the user has typed XXX at this point, the loop ends and it will jump down here and write out end line, which incidentally is just the text end of report. <laughs>